How does the analogy of the appearance of an ornament in gold eradicate the illusion of the world seeming real and separate from the Brahm? Well, this seems to be real for everybody. That's everybody's experience. It is real and also separate from Brahm. Answer. There exists a difference in gold and ornament because of the cause and effect relation. It is illusory. See, you have a gold ring. Then you say, I don't like it. You go to the jeweler. So he said, give it another form. What? Okay, make a bangle out of it. Then you don't like bangle, then you say, no, no, make a locket out of it. Then you say, no, 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 make a hairpin out of it. No, 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 my my tooth needs some capping, so now I need a gold capping. So just melt the gold and I'll give it to my dentist and they'll put up a, the gold cap on my... In, in one time, I don't know whether you have ever seen or not, but at one time, all the rich people would have the caps of gold on their tooth. And when they would smile, <laughs> can you believe? Gleaming and glistering and shining smiles. Maybe that's why these toothpaste companies are saying, have a shining smile. But you can't have shining if you don't have gold. So the poor people would have silver fillings, but the rich one would have the golden fillings also and golden caps also onto their broken tooth. And yeah, last time in America, I was told that these days they are uh, putting embellishment onto the new tooth which is created and they put a diamond onto the tooth. Yeah, there's a diamond on the tooth. And I was actually given the proposal that we would like to put some diamonds on you. <laughs> I said, thank you very much. Not interested. An ornament's, ornament's true form is nothing but gold and, and hence there is no difference. Thus in reality it is the same. Therefore no or ornament exists separate from the gold. Similarly, the cause and effect difference that appears between Brahm and the world with its attributes is illusory. Upon deep contemplation, one will realize that the Naam Roop, Naam means name, Roop means form. The Naam Roop world, uh, the objective world with the names and forms that we see cannot be proven to have a separate existence from Asti Bhati Priya. Now please remember these new names. Asti is the pure existence. Bhati means the ever knowing. And the Priya is the ever blissful. It is proven to be illusory. An illusory object has no separate existence from that in which it appears to be. Hmm. Hence the world and the Brahm are actually not separate from one another. So there is no existence of world separate from Brahm. In this way the analogy of ornament and gold eradicates the illusion of world existing as a real entity separate from Brahm. Number one, this world is not a parinam, cause and effect of Brahm. But this is vivarth of Brahm. Like from the gold, the ornament is made. Ornament doesn't exist without gold. You can't say the jeweler, dear, I'll keep the gold, but you make me a bangle out of it. You have to give that gold ornament so that he can melt and then create a new form out of it. So the gold remains the unchanging factor in all ornaments, but the ornament shapes can change. Can change. Hmm. Question. What is Bhranti? Bhranti is Adhyasa. What is Adhyasa? The Bhranti Gyan and the object of the illusory knowledge is adhyasa. Branti, illusory. Gyan, knowledge. And adhyasa word is imposition. So what is branti? It is said the illusory knowledge 
happening on any object which is actually an imposition is called an adhyas what is bhranti adhyas what is adhyas it is the bhranti gyan the wrong knowing the illusory knowing how many types of adhyasas exist gyan adhyas and artha adhyas are the two types of adhyas and gyan adhyas has six sub types now this is all which requires your attention and to be fitted in your memory lanes first keval sambandh adhyas in this type of imposition of the atman on the anatman only the intimate association with the atman is imposed on the anatman not the atman's real essence there are two existences one is called anatma the real anat uh, is the non real self and atma is the real self so there is an intimate association obviously of both with one to another so when the the it is intimate association with the atman is imposed on the anatman and when we say on the uh, 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 atma it's not the real atma this thing is happening because everything is happening in the reflection to sambandh sahit sambandhi ka adhyas sambandh means relation sahit means inclusive sambandhi with whom the relation is happening adhyas ka adhyas of adhyas so the innit nature of anatman and its intimate association with the atman both are imposed on the atman now it's like saying that the box is on the table so see this table as an anatman and you can imagine this box as atman so this is a close relationship of atma and anatma it's just a very loose example this is gross things and we are talking about something very subtle keval dharma adhyas imposition of the attributes of the body and senses on the atman now let's say what are the attributes of the body bhavesh attributes of uh, mind ipsa uh, buddhi ka what are the attributes of the intellect vikas to understand hmm what does your intellect do just say that it analyzes and uh, makes a firm decision hmm something similarly the senses have their own attributes now the attributes of the body and senses are imposed upon the atman hence you end up saying i think i see i hear i heard it i thought i went there walking i ran i was insulted nobody gave me me food you know so the attributes of the body mind senses are when taken into atman that's an imposition is called keval dharma dharma means attributes the attributes fourth dharma sahit dharmi ka adhyas imposition of the innate nature and attributes like being doer bearer of the antahkaran on the atman now dharma and dharmi in relation and related so atma in relation to antahkaran one aspect of this and all the attributes of the antahkaran 
into the Atman. So whatever is happening into the Antakaran, two, two things only happen, just two, nothing more. Doer and bearer. I want to do this and I want to indulge in this. Other than that, what is there? Now all the stories of sadness, grief, pain are because you couldn't bear all those experience, all those things or people or object and were taken away. Doer, I want to do this, do this, do this, do this or guilt of I couldn't do this, this, this or hopes I want to do this, 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 this. It's just so two things, doership and then the bearer. Anyun adhyasa. Anya means other, other, a ball of heated iron glows as a result of mutual superimposition. If you ever have seen an iron ball when it is totally, when heated it looks red, it isn't red but it looks red. Burning is attribute of fire not of an iron ball but this heated iron will burn also. So the fire attributes have gone into, gone into totally or should we say just imposed for some time. Once you leave the heated ball for some hours, it will come back to its same nature of being cold and heavy and not then burning and glowing and red or hot. Similarly, the mutual super, superimposition of the Anatman on the Atman and the Atman on the Anatman is known as Anyon Anya Adhyas. Anya, Antakaran's attributes gone into Atman and Atman's attributes gone into Antakaran. How? When you say, I am right, <laughs> that is the Sat. Sat of Atman. I know everything. Do you know? You know nothing. I know everything. Knowing is attribute of Atman. Then many people think that wherever they go, they bring joy to everybody. Like, oh, how, how was the party? Party? How can it be good? I never went there. It's only when I go, everything is good. Now, this, this happiness, Ananda is attribute of Atman, not of Antakaran. But the exchange has happened. So, this sense which uh, people have, I know everything, I have seen everything, I have done everything, and I am the best. And people, see people will remember me. This is again, I don't know what a very disease or what. Everybody is dying that everybody should remember that, that I lived. Even when, even when I'll be dead, I'll be remembered. Who will know you? You do, did nothing. I have done so many things. Death won't kill my name and fame. Where is it coming from? Yeah. Anyan Anya Adhyas. Anya Trai Adhyas. The real essence of Atman is not imposed on the Anatman, but the innate nature of the Anatman is imposed on the Atman. The unilateral imposition is known as Anyatraya Adhyas. Now this Anyatraya Adhyas gets divided further. How many types of Adhyas? Two. Now the division of Artha Adhyas. Arth means meaning. Swarup Adhyas and Sansarga Adhyas are the division. That which is negated through jnana, its essential nature is imposed on the adhisthana. What does adhisthana mean? The substratum. The anatman gets negated 
through the knowledge of Adhisthana, this imposition of the illusory unit of Anatman is called Swarupa Adhyasa. Who can give me any example of Swarupa Adhyasa? You people have done too many times Sukirti. I am sorrowful. That is the attribute of the jada of the anatma, the sorrowfulness. Mm. But I have uh, imposed that upon me, mm. the atma, and that is quite so. Right, nice. right, right. And this gets negated when the adhisthana is known. So in the in the avidya of the adhisthana, this imposition can survive and thrive. But if the substratum is known, then this, this negative imposition cannot stay there. That's Rupadhyas. Sansarga. That which cannot be negated through the jnana, that's the true self, its real essence cannot be imposed, only its association gets imposed. This is how there is imposition of association with Atman on the Anatman and is known as Sansarga Adhyasa. Anybody would like to give an example of this? Sansarg. Sansarg means associated, very closely associated. Hot road. Hmm? Hot road. Hot what? Road. Hot rod. Hmm. If the rod gets heated up, then you cannot hold it with your hand. But this heat is going to stay in the rod for a very limited time. And if it is not further heated, then the heat goes away and the rod comes back into its natural elemental temperature. So that which comes and goes because of the cl close, loose association, sun, sarga. So this body, mind, senses in association with me seem to be as me but even if you have no gyan when the death strikes jiva leaves the body although jiva doesn't has the authority or power to to stay in that body but nobody wants to leave the body and yet when the death comes the separation happens. In deep sleep, the disassociation with the mind and intellect, senses and body too happens for a limited hours. There's a loose uh, disassociation happening. There's a dissolution of mind and intellect happening in the deep sleep. So all the attributes of the mind which we had superimposed upon ourselves are also gone at that time. So you might be a sinner, a pauper, a poorer, or richer, an educated, or illiterate. In deep sleep, all are equally, unisonly same. It's only when the mind and intellect comes, you know, it raises its head like a serpent and then it's... Uh, blowing venom out of it. But in deep sleep, Jnani, Ajnani, same. Enlightened or a fool, all same. But it's again, you know, again the association happens, then again, this, all the Adhyasas forms which have been said by now, begin to function. So the above mentioned six types of adhyasas are included in it. It is also inclusive of branti and its five types. Anyon, anyadhyasa between the attributes of atman and anatman is also included. It will be clarified further. Question, which adhyasa can best explain the illusory association between the false self, ego, etc.? That is the Anatman and the Atman along with the other Adhyas as well. Answer is Anyon Anya Adhyasa. 
What is that? Anyanadyas. The illusion of that in this and this in that. That in this and this in that. Atma in anatma and anatma in atma. Interchange. What is the manner of adhyasa between atman and anatman? Sat, chit, ananda, and advait, non-dual, are the four attributes of atman. Say it. Sat, chit, ananda, advait. Asat, jad, dukha, dvait, are the four attributes of anatman. Say it. Sorrow and duality attributes of Anatman have concealed the bliss and non-dual attributes of the Atman. As a result, in the Atman, I am blissful and non-dual is not experienced. Instead, I am miserable and separate from Ishwar is experienced. Right? Yes? True, all of you? Truth and Chaitanya attributes of the Atman have concealed Anatman's attribute of untruth and inertness. As a result, in the Antakaran of the Anatman is, is untrue and inert, does not seem to be. It exists and is Chaitanya seems to be. Everybody has this feeling, oh I am and I know everything. I know. Antakaran can't say I know. Like this, this mic cannot say I am speaking. But it's the electric current which is going in it and here I am giving the speech and it's just getting it further into that recording machine. It's not even lip syncing, stupid. It's just standing and watching. Is it standing and watching? No. But yet we call it a stand. <laughs> the mic is on the stand, but it's not standing. Yeah. So, in this manner, Adhyasa exists between the Atman and the Anatman. Right? And here we come to the end of the chapter. So just quickly run how many types of adhyas? And how many types of jnana adhyas? Six types. Uh -huh. That is uh, Kewa Sambandha adhyas, hmm. Sammansai Sambandhika adhyas, Dharma adhyas, Dharmsai Dharmika adhyas, Anunya adhyas and Anyatara. Hmm. Uh, Artha Dhyas is further divided into two. Bhavesh. Sansarga Dhyas. Swarupa Dhyas and Sansarga Dhyas. So now you need to go again and again and again into this to understand uh, in totality. Because this is kind of giving it the post-mortem of why this illusion has happened. See, it's very simple. Like yoga sister, you read, the whole world is your illusion. True. But how? That's not there. That's not being explained there. That's why all the Vedantic scriptures come with this disclaimer, I would say that do not read it on your own. It should have, every Vedanta book should have this, this, you know, kind of statutory warning. Do not read it on your own. Find a guru first, and then through the guru, you should, you know, go through it. But in the age of internet, anybody can download it. Books are being published. See, when a particular Swami was teaching that book, it's a very different thing. But when it gets recorded and written and printed and when wants to know everything and, and reads on, on its own, it's not the same. It's not the same at all. So although these, these texts were not written in Sanskrit, they are written in a regional language, 
but still it holds so much weightage on its own that if you have understood this properly and you are clear about it then getting uh, into further more scripture readings and gaining more knowledge will become so 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 easy like when Gita says na jayate mriyate va kadachin nayam bhutva bhavita va na bhuyaha ajo nitya shashvato ayam purano na hanyate hanyamane sharire it's actually talking about the sansargadhyas and Krishna is saying that Atma never goes away, never is born, never dies. Neither it died in past nor it will die in the coming future. And by killing a body, you cannot kill the Atma. The association, the Keval Sambandha Dhyas are being talked about and in some fringe there we have the Sambandha Adhyas also and Dharma Sait Dharmi Adhyas also because Arjuna was crying that how can I kill my uncles and gurus who have taught me and, and Krishna is saying well you cannot actually kill anybody the one who will be killed will be their bodies and everybody is going to die one day so who are you to say this that you will kill or not kill in this need of hour in these times the worst times we need to bring some order in the society and all these demonic negative people have kind of uh, taken over the society and they are ruling and they are abusing their power and all of them now have to go. So that's why this war of Mahabharata is not called just a war, it's called the Dharma Yuddha. It's a, it's a war of religion. It's not a religion like what you understand, the Hindu Sikh Muslim religion. It's all about the, the vows and responsibility which every individual and every caste people had on their heads, none of them are performing those duties properly. It's not about conversions. So most stupid thing which people, uh, this, in Sanskrit we have word vidharmi, who don't understand the real dharma, and they are doing all things against the real dharma because right from the root we don't say that anybody can liberate you. It's only when your avidya is removed you get liberated. So your war has to be with your own stupidities and darkness and ignorances. And for that wisdom is required and jnana is required, knowledge is required, not conversions. But because when this kind of wisdom is not decimated properly and just a ritualistic worship takes over, which has happened in our country, the purity of the minds was in larger proportion. People were truthful, dharmic, nice, compassionate, kind serving, humble, in totality the society was like that. Hence there were a larger number of individuals who became Atmavit, knower of self. And out of those many became you know, full-time teachers, Acharyas, and then they were teaching others about the truth of your own true self. But again with the degradation of many things, this system of teaching, the system of renunciation, the system of being a sadhu dwindled. And more uh, of indulgence and more negativity, you know, in proportions 
have outgrown, I would say. So most of uh, people in this country became ritualistically worshippers, not thinkers, not seekers. At one time, this country was country of seekers. That's why this name Bharat. Bha means to illuminate. Ba means knowledge. Rat means always busy in raising the graph of knowledge and light in your life. Rat means busy in that, engaged in that. So one who is engaged in seeking knowledge is called Bharatiya. You are the true son or daughter of this country if you are doing this. If you are not doing this, then Bharat is just a piece of land on which we live and die one day. But Bharat is not about the name of a land, but it is all about the attitude and aptitude of people who live on it, who are busy in seeking knowledge growing the intellect, making it pragya purn, making it translucent and beautiful, and then knowing all the secrets of life and death and jiva and atma and paramatma, and then what this whole prapancha is. You know, what the hell this world is? Who knows that? Who knows what death is? Who knows what life is? Who knows who I am? Who knows who Ishvara is? And who knows who the absolute substratum Brahmana is. That's why this country was called Bharat. Bharat. India is not its true name at all. It's this name was given by invaders and it's not the real name. Bharat is the real name. I call a person a true patriot when the, this person is living the life as per the dictums of our sages and that is to raise your intelligence and be a true Bharat, a living Bharat as an individual. As an individual. So this individual, this citizen of this country then becomes a representative of this uh, wonderful land of wisdom. This is something which every citizen should ask themselves. Are we a true patriot? Are we engaged in raising our knowledge? Or we are just using empty words Bharat Mata Ki Jai without even knowing what Bharat is and what Mata is is of no use. The real nationalism would be you become an awakened and you become a rishi yourself. If you are not a rishi, you are not a patriot then. That's the reason that this country has worshipped its acharyas, its teachers as God. Guru Brahma, Guru Vishnu, Guru Devo, Maheshwara. We have not seen Brahma or Vishnu or Shiva, but we have seen our Guru who creates wisdom in me, who helps me to sustain this wisdom and who destroys all the negativities and my avidya, in my agyan, from my mind. Hence the Guru is the Brahma, the Vishnu, the Mahesh. That's the beauty. So we end with this. Mm -hmm.